Hey, Bolvers Colfax Math here. Today we're going to go over how to make this wooden tangram puzzle. All of the layout's going to be done with a compass like this, and then we're going to use a hand tool called a coping saw to cut out the project. So this is really kind of a cool project. I love these tangram puzzles. They're fun to play with. There's a lot of learning involved, good geometry, good constructions, and then a fun, easy wood project. So let's get... So to get started, you're going to have all your tools in your Harbor Freight tool bag. That's going to consist of safety glasses, safety has to be number one, uh, your speed square for layout, six inch coping saw right here, and a clamp or some way just to hold the wood down to the tabletop. I'm going to do this whole tangram project first on a piece of paper, and then we're going to do it on a piece of wood. If you don't have any wood, uh, there's wood outside my classroom. You could swing by and grab it outside the back door. I have eighth inch piece of plywood. You could use cedar that we've milled. You could use quarter inch plywood. You could really make this out of any kind of piece of scrap wood. We're going to make our six inches by six inches. So we'll do this a few ways. Let me just show you the general layout first. So I'm just going to start with a piece of paper. I want it to be square. Best way to find a square is to fold it up this way and that way and then not only is that going to give me a square it's also going to give me my first diagonal so I could fold this as well okay now that I have my square this is just going to be a rough approximation of it I'm going to split it in half here I'm going to split it in half here and that's going to give me two right triangles. Not only will they be right, they'll be isosceles, meaning that this will be the same as this. And then this is one of the legs times root two. So it's an isosceles right triangle. Then after I've done that, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to split from the middle here to the middle here and I could find that middle by folding this up to there and that's going to give me this right there this triangle as well will be isosceles from here and here the same isosceles right this will be the hypotenuse of this right triangle um, so whatever this is this is the same length times a root two. Okay, then from there, I'm gonna split this in half. And I could do, do that by folding the paper in half. And then I'm gonna create another isosceles right triangle here. That's gonna give me a parallelogram, a triangle, a square, and another right triangle. If this were six on the side then this would be six this right here would be six those are the hypotenuse this right here would be three this right here would be three this would also be three and another three this length right here would be 3 root 2 because it's an isosceles right triangle. Okay, now that we're done just sketching it on paper and getting an idea on how to put it together, we're now going to make it in wood. We're going to make it 6 inches by 6 inches. We're going to use our 7 inch speed square. Um, these are really clever tools and they are kind of the main tool you use for layout on any construction or wood project. So the first thing I'm going to do on here is check that my board is square. Then I'm going to mark six inches down. So there's six. And then I'm going to make mark six this way to the six mark. And then draw over to... I'm using a Sharpie only because uh, it shows up so much better on the camera. So now I have a six by six square. Now I'm going to clamp this to my bench, my tabletop. So here's the coping saw. First thing we're going to do, blade teeth are on the inside. So we got to reverse that blade. 
So we're going to take this handle off. Make sure you got your safety glasses on. Take this handle off. Reverse this blade. And then put the handle back on there. Woo, that's sure, not very straight. So there it is, there's my six by six square. You see my second cut a lot straighter. I had a better angle with my coping saw, pretty flat like that so I could see where I was going. And I used the whole blade. Either way is gonna work out okay. Fold it in half again to have a quarter sheet. And I'm just gonna clean that up a little bit. Okay, there's a couple ways to do the layout on here. Um, we're actually going to do it with constructions, which is only using a straight edge and a compass and a pencil. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to use a sharpie so it's easier to see. Is I'm going to go corner to corner. So I'm going to draw this from my corner to corner. I'm just using another board for a straight edge. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to draw from corner to corner, but I don't want to go the whole way. I only want to go half the distance for now. So I'm going to go corner to corner, but stop in the center. And then now I need to figure out where half this distance is. So I could do that measuring it. I mean, I know it's three inches down is a good way to do it. Or I could use my compass to actually bisect it. The way I would use a compass to bisect a segment, I have to be greater than the halfway point like this. I'm going to draw an arc. I'm going to draw another arc here from the other corner. And I could draw down onto the bench and use another board down here if I want. But now I have two points. And those two points are going to determine my perpendicular bisector. So I'm going to go through the point of intersection of the two arcs. And then that point of intersection right there. And that's going to give me my halfway point. I'm not going to strike that line. I'm just going to mark it right there. So there's that point right there. Then that is going to go perpendicular to that okay then I'm going to do the same thing on this side I'm going to bisect this line by using the compass as well so again I'm going to start here draw this arc draw this arc where they intersect will be the perpendicular bisector so I'm going to use my straight edge. It's going to go from that point through that point of intersection. I'm going to mark that. And then now that I have my two midpoints, I'm going to connect those two midpoints to give me my triangle down here. So there it is. There's my bottom triangle. And then now that I have that bottom triangle drawn, I'm going to go back with my straight edge and go corner to corner. and draw in this mark here. And then my next step is I want to transfer this length to here. And I could just do that with my compass. So I'm going to set my compass arc on that distance there and lock it in place. And I'm going to transfer that length through the me arc measurement to there. Now that I have that point, I'm going to connect these with my straight edge, giving me that triangle. Okay, so I have my two big triangles, next triangle, this triangle, my parallelogram. 
Next, I need to draw this line to the middle of this line. I want it to be a perpendicular. So I think probably the best way to do that is just draw a bisector on here from these points and that'll find the midpoint. It'll be up here, but I'll connect that to that and stop it right there. So I'm gonna set this at some point greater than the midpoint, say like right there. Lock it in place, hold it here. Draw that arc, draw this arc. A point at intersection. This arc right here is all points equidistance from that. That's what a circle is. This arc is all points equidistance from that. And then where they intersect are all points equidistance from each spot. So now that I have that, I could connect um, those right there. I'm not going to draw the whole thing. I'm actually only going to draw this. So that gives me my square. So there's my layout of my Tangram puzzle. Um, we could use our speed square to check our measurements. Let's see, this is six, six. So we are three right there, and then three from here to here. The other thing you could do too, is you could color this in. This little square orange. And then I'll cut the rest of it out. I think I better go to time lapse here. All right, we're making some progress here. Again, I'm just pushing to get it started. Actually, let me turn this blade around and see if it's gonna help cut on the push stroke instead of the pull stroke. So to do that, you just unscrew it. So now the teeth are cutting on the push stroke. Oh, I take it back. I like cutting on the push stroke more. So there's our tangram puzzle right there, put together. And then again, it was a six inch square. So this is six. And then this isosceles right triangle here. So this leg squared plus this leg squared equals a hypotenuse squared. So this is actually six divided by root two, which isn't gonna work out to be an even measurement on a ruler. So we did the whole project with constructions using only a compass and a straight edge, but you could have done the whole thing with measurement and a speed square as well. Whenever you work with compasses, you're creating exact values instead of approximate values when you work with measurement. This channel is really all about practical math. If you like the video, hit like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And please comment below. I'd like to hear what you have to say about this project. And another triangle there. So those are our seven pieces. Part of the assignment here is you're going to create a spreadsheet and you're going to do a cell for every piece, finding both its perimeter and also its area. 
the sum of the area should equal the area of this square. So you're going to find the area of all seven pieces, add that up, and that should be the equivalent of 6 times 6, 36. Number these pieces, number 1, number 2, number 3, number 4, and so forth that way. So if you're building a spreadsheet, the top of this column right here would be part number one. And I would use a descriptor like big triangle for the next cell. And then we could do length times width. We know on the outside it's six. So this squared plus this squared equals six. So to figure that out, we have whatever that is, we'll call it X x squared plus x squared equals 6 squared. Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I have one of these, another one of these, so 2x squared equals 36. x squared, dividing both sides by 2, is equal to 18. Square root of both sides. I have to do that on my calculator. Um, 4 would be 16, 5 is 25, so probably, I'm just going to approximate it here, 4.2. And we could see on the square there, it's about 4 and an eighth, 4.12. One column will be length, 4.2, width, 4.2, area. Area is going to be base times height. So I'm going to take this cell right here, multiply it by this cell right here, and then divide it by 2. So one cell times the other cell divided by 2. We'll do perimeter. Perimeter will be the next cell. It'll be one side, 4.2, plus the other side, plus the hypotenuse is 6. And we're going to do that for all pieces on the spreadsheet. You're going to add this up right here. And the sum of this column right here should be equal to 36 because that was the whole square put together. So when you turn this in, you want to take a photo of your finished tangram puzzle. Funny how many times I build this, I still can't always put it together. A spreadsheet of your parts. And then maybe a reflection on the project. And actually, I'll go ahead and write numbers on this for the spreadsheet. So we have one, two, three, four. We'll call this part five. The parallelogram will be part number six. And this will be part number seven. Right there. All right, there's a little cat. All the pieces made into a cat. See what else you can make into them. If you like the video, hit like. If you're new to the channel, think about subscribing. I appreciate you watching this. Thank you.